And shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun. Where the pit upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. Fair a day I have not seen. What are these? Thou look not like the inhabitants of the earth, you that are on it. Speak, if you can. What are you? All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Gloms. All hail Macbeth, hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail Macbeth, that shall be king hereafter. Good sir. Why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? Hail! Hail! Faster than Macbeth and greater! Not so happy, yet much happier! Thou shalt get things all thou needest! All hail Macbeth and fairest love! All hail Macbeth and fairest Stay! You imperfect speakers, tell me more! I know I'm Thane of Gloms, but how of Cawdor? The Thane of Cawdor lives! Speak, I charge you! Whither are they vanished? Into the air. Were such things here? <laughs> Your children shall be kings. You shall be king. And Thane of Cawdor too. Who's there? The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. He bade me from him call thee Thane of Cawdor. What can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the fame lives yet? Wonder heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did line the rebel with hidden help and vantage, or that with both he labored in his country's wreck. I know not, but treason's capital, because that's an proved, have overthrown him. Gloms and Thane of Cawdor, the greatest is behind. Thank you, gentlemen. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, it cannot be good. Look how our partner's wrapped. If chance shall have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your leisure. Let us towards the king. Think upon what hath chanced, and at more time the interim having weighed in, let us speak, our free hearts each to other. Very gladly. Till then, enough. Come, friends. and loyalty I owe, in doing it pays itself. Your Highness's part is to receive our duties, and now our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which do but what they should by doing everything safe towards your love and honor. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant a tree, and will labor until I make myself. 
There, if I grow, the harvest is your own. We will establish an estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we named here after the Prince of Cumberland. The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down or else or leap, for in my way it lies. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. True, worthy Benko. He is so valiant. Let's after him. As I stood wrapped in wonder of it came missives from the king who, who all hailed me Thane of Cawdor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming out of time with, Hail, king that shall be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness. Glams thou art, and Cawdor, and shalt be what thou art promised. Hmm. Yet I do fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. I thee hither, that I may pour my spirit into thine ear and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. <laughs> Come, you spirits, attend on mortal thought. Unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, chop full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell. Let my keen eye see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold! Hold. Oh, great gloves. Worthy Condor, thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future is instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall some that morrow see. O oh, face, my fane is a book where men may read strange matters. Look like the innocent flower, be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for. And you shall put this night's nice great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up clear. To alter favor ever is to fear. <laughs> Leave the rest to me. Pleasant seat, the nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. As guest of summer, I've observed, the air is delicate. See, see, our own hostess, fair noble lady, bear your guest tonight. Oh. <laughs> All our service, and every point twice done, and then done double. <laughs> Where's the thing of Cawdor? Give me your hand and conduct me to my host. We love him highly, and shall continue our graces unto him. Fire leave, Francis.
done when it is done. Twere well it were done quickly. Duncan is here in double trust, first as I am his kinsman and his subject, and then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. How now? What news? He has almost sucked. Why have you left the chamber? Hath he asked for me? No, you're not. He has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you'd be so much more than man. If we should fail. <laughs> we fail. But screw your courage to the sticking place, and we will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains will I with wine and wassail so convinced that memory, the warder of the brain, shall be a fume, and the receipt of reason a limbic only. When in swine asleep, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? Will it not be received when we've marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and climb a roar upon his death? I am settled. Away. And to mock the time with the fairest show, false face must hide what the false heart doth know. <laughs> Friend. What, sir? Not yet at rest, the king's abed. He hath been an unusual pleasure. I dreamt of the weird sisters last night. To you they have showed some truth. I think not of them. Yet, when we can entreat an hour to serve, we would spend it in some words upon that business if you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. Good. Repose the while. Thanks, sir. Like to you. dagger which I see before me, the handle towards my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, yet I see thee still. Art thou not, fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain? I see thee still, and on thy blade blood, which was not so before. There is no such thing. It's the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. I go and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk has made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark! It was the owl that shrieked. He's about it. Who's there? Black. I am afraid they have awakened, but tis not done. Hark. I have laid her daggers ready. He could not miss me. Oh, my husband. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and, and the crickets cry. Did you not speak? When? No. As I descended? I. Hark. Who lies in the second chamber? Donald Bain. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. 
sorry sight. We thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep, sleep the nits of the raveled sleep of care. What do you mean? Still, it cried sleep no more to all the house. Glums have murdered sleep and therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that cried? Why were they paying you to unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things? Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there! Go, go and carry them and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again. I dare not! Infirm of purpose! Give me the daggers. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fear the painted devil. If he do bleed, I'll gild the faces of the grooms at all. For it must seem they are guilt. Whence is that knocking? Why is it with me when every noise appalls me? What hands are here, huh? They pluck out mine eyes! Will all great Neptune's oceans wash this blood clean from my hand? My hands are your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear knocking at the south entry. Retire we to our chambers. A, a little water clears us from the steam. Hark, more knocking. To know my deed, were best not know myself. Wake, Duncan, with thy knocking. I was thou couldst. Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were porter at Hellgate, he should have all turned the key. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there in the name of Beelzebub? Here's a farmer that hanged himself on the acceptation of plenty. Come in time, have not been enough about you. Here, you'll, you'll sweat for it. <laughs> oh, boy, oh. <laughs> uh, knock, knock. Who's there in the other devil's name? Faith. Here's an equivocator that could swear in both the scales against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. Oh. Come in, equivocator. <laughs> Knock, knock. Who's there? Faith. Here's an English tailor come hither for stealing out of our French holes. Come in, tailor. Here you may uh, roast your goose. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, knock, knock. Never a quiet. What are you? This place, too cold for hell. I'll devil potter it no further. I had thought so, but there are some of all professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Anon, anon, I pray you. Remember the porter. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second pop, and drink, sir, is a great, a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Mammy, sir, nose painting, sleep and uh, urine. Lecture, sir, it provokes and unprovoked. It provokes the desire, but it takes away the performance. Therefore, 
My strength may be said to be an equivocator with luxury. It makes him and it mars him. It sets him on and it takes him off. It persuades him and it hardens him, makes him stand to and uh, not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep and giving him the life, it leaves him. I believe drink gave the lie last night. That it did, sir. It the very throat on me. But I replied to him for his lie, and I think, eh, being too strong for him, though he took on my leg some time, yet I made a shift to cast him. Is thy master stirring? Eh. Ah, our knocking has awakened him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy thing? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. This is the door. The night has been unruled. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down. And as they say, lamenting certain air, strange strains of death. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. Twas a rough night. Ah! Oh, horror! 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 What's the matter? What's the matter? matter? Most sacrilegious murder hath oped the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. The new majesty? <sighs> Approach the chamber and destroy your sight. Do not bid me speak. See and speak yourselves. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Banquo and Donaldine! Malcolm! Awake! Ring the bell! What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house? Speak! Speak! Oh, gentle lady, it's not for you to hear what I can speak. Oh, Banquo! Banquo! A royal master's murder! Hide in our house! Dear Duff, I pray thee contradict thyself and say it is not so! Had I ever died an hour before this chance, I have lived a blessed time! What is this? Chamber as it seemed to have done it. Their hands and faces were all badges with blood, so were their daggers, which are white to be found upon their pillows. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you do so? Oh, help me, help oh, me. Let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. What well, 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 it? Let's not consort with them. Off England. Tar and I are separate in fortune. And now, King Cawdor Glom's all as the weird women promised. And I fear that place was Fally Fort. But hush! No more. Banquo, Leonce, tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me. Ride you this afternoon. I, my good lord. Is it far you ride? As far, my lord, I was fill up the time to this and supper. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. Those fleons with you? I, my good lord, our time does call upon us. I wish your ride swift and sure of foot. Farewell. 
Let every man be master of his own time till seven at night. While then, God be with you. Sir, a word with you. Attend those men our pleasure. They are, my lord, about the palace gate. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing. To be safely thus, our fears in Banquo stick deep. Who's there? Now go to the door and wait there till we call. Was it not yesterday that we talked together? It was, so please, Your Highness. Well then now, have you considered of my speeches? You made it known to us. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy. True, my, True, my lord. lord. So, he is mine. We will do as you command us. Within the hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, for it must be done tonight, with no rubs, nor blotches in the work. Fleance, the son that keeps him company, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve your, yourselves apart, I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, resolved my lord. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it finds heaven, must find it out tonight. Well now, my lord, why do you keep alone? What's done is done. We have scotched the snake, not killed it. Gentle, my lord, slake all your rugged thoughts. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance live. It shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, till thou applaud the deed. So prithee, go with me. Looks like rain tonight. Let it come down! Oh, gentry, fly, 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 fly. First and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. Be large in mirth, anon. We'll drink a measure, the table round. There's blood upon thy face, 
his bankrolls then. You see, dispatched. My lord, his throat is caught. That I differ. Thou art the best of the cutthroats, yet he's good that did the like for Fleance. Most royal sir, Fleance is escaped. Now I'm confined in saucy doubts and fears. But Banquo safe? Aye, my good lord, safe in a ditch he bides. Thanks for that. Get thee gone. <clears throat> my royal lord, you do not give the cheer. Now, good digestion and health. May it please your highness, sir. Table's full. Here's a place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my good lord. What is it that moves, your highness? Which of you has done this? Done what, good lord? Thou canst not say I did it! Never shake that gory locks at me! Gentlemen, run! Oh. His highness is not. No, 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 worthy friends. <laughs> say it, my. My lord is often thus, and, and hath been from his youth. Pray you, pray you, keep seed. The fit is momentary. Upon the thought he will again be well. If, if much you know him, you shall offend him and extend his passion. So feed and regard him not. Are you a man? I and a bold one that dares look on that which might have fallen the devil. Proper stuff. What was done, you look but on a stool. Behold, look. Fie for shame. Time has been that when the brains were out, the man would die in there and end. But now they rise again. My worthy lord, your noble friends do like you. I, I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to those that know me. Come, love and health to all. Then I'll sit. Give me some wine filled full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss would he were here. Our, our duties and the pledge. A bond! I quit my sight! Hence, horrible shesh! Unreal mockery hence! I pray you speak not, he grows worse and worse. Stand oh. not upon the order of your going, but, but go to once. Good night, and better help attend to match. Yes, a, a kind good night to all. It will have blood. They say blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. I will to the weird sisters, more shall they speak. You lack the season of all nature's sleep. Come, go to sleep. We are yet but young indeed. Breaking of my thumb, something 
wicked this way comes. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you by that which you profess. However you come to know it, answer me. Speak, demand. We'll answer. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Beware, Macduff. Beware, the thing of fight. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. For none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live Macduff. What need I fear of thee? But yet, I'll make assurance double sure. Thou shalt not live. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill comes against him. That can never be. Who can impress the forest, bid the tree, unfix his earthbound root? Tell me, shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. My lord, Macduff has fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my good lord. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon Fife. Give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. <sighs> So perchance, this tyrant whose sole name blisters on your tongue was once not honest. You have loved him well. He hath not touched you yet. I am not treacherous. Well, Macbeth is. I have lost my hopes. Bleed, bleed, poor country. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinkst. Be not offended. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each day a new gash is added to her wounds. Yet our poor country shall have more vices than ever before, more suffer in more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What would he be? Is myself, I mean. I have none. The king becoming gracious, as justice 
verity, temperance, stableness, devotion, patience, courage, fortitude, I have no relish of them. Nay, had I power, I should pour the sweet milk of concord into hell, uproar the universal peace, and confound all unity on earth. Oh, Scotland, Scotland! If such a one be fit to govern, speak. I am as I have spoken. Fit to govern? No, not to live! O oh, nation miserable, fare thee well. The evils that thou repeatest upon thyself have banished me from Scotland. O oh, my breast, thy hope ends here. Macduff, this noble passion hath reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. I put myself in thy direction and speak my own detraction. What I am truly is thine and my poor country's command. Whither indeed, before thy here approached me, old steward, with ten thousand warlike men. Already at a point was setting forth, but now we'll together, and the chance of goodness be like our warranted quarrel. Why are you silent? Such welcome and unwelcome things at once. Tis hard to reconcile. See, who comes here? My countryman. My ever gentle cousin. Welcome hither. Sir, amen. Stand Scotland where it did? Alas, poor country, now is the time of help. Your eye in Scotland would create soldiers, make our women fight to doff their dire distress. Bet their comfort, we're coming thither. Gracious England hath granted us good steward and 10,000 warlike men. Would I could answer this comfort with the like. Your castle is surprised, wife and babe savagely slaughtered. Merciful heaven. My children too? Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence. My wife killed too? I have so. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All, my pretty ones? Did you say all? Oh, hell kite. All? What, all my pretty chickens in their dam on one fell swoop? Spewed it like a man. I will do so. But I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for my fellow slaughter on their souls. <laughs> heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. <laughs> Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it. <laughs> oh, I could play the woman with mine eyes and braggart with my tongue. But gentle heavens, cut short all intermission front to front. Bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself Within my sword's length set him. If he scape, heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking. And the powers above put on their instruments. Receive what cheer you may. The night is long that never finds the day. Two, 
Why then, it's time to do it. Who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him? You mark that? Oh, Lord, will this hands never be clean? No more than my lord, no more than. She has spoken what she should not. I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. <laughs> Cannot be undone. To bed. To, to bed. To, to bed. No more reports. Let them fly all. Till Burnham Wood removed the Dun's name, I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy Malcolm? All mortal consequences have pronounced me thus. Fear not, Macbeth. No man born of woman shall ever have power upon thee. Where goddest thou, Goose Look? There is ten thousand. Geese, villain? Soldiers, sir. What soldiers, Wayface? The English force, so please you. Take thy face hence. I will not be afraid of death and bane till Burnham Forest come to Dundonay. that noise? Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Gracious, my lord, I should report that which I say I saw, but know not how to do it. Well, say, sir. As I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham and anon me thought the wood began to move. Liar and slave! Let me do your wrath if it not be so. Within three miles may you see it coming, I say, a moving grove. Thou speakest false. Upon the next tree shalt thou hang alive. Fear not, till Burnham Wood do come to Dunsinane. And now a wood comes towards Dunsinane. Arm, arm and out. Ring the alarm bell, blow wind, come back. At least we'll die with harness on our back.
or none. What is thy name? My name is Macbeth. The devil himself cannot pronounce the title more hateful to mine ears. No, more fearful. Thou lies, poor tyrant. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day till the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing.
thank you to our director, Mr. Tostado, Mr. Kim, who worked so hard on the sound, as well as Evan Brown up there for sound and lighting. Round of applause, please. Also, our assistant stage managers, Abby Stein and Benny Rosenblum, working so hard backstage. The entire cast and crew, thank you to the administration, thank you to the faculty that supported our production, thank you to all of you for being such an incredible, supportive, and energetic audience.